We can play a role in this because we can lobby the governments that our families come from and put pressure on them and campaign to say, this is what you guys need to do. You need to have more integration. You need to come together in the Caribbean and in Africa because if you come together, you have more power. We all know that, that the Caribbean as a, as a individually are much weaker than if they came together as a block. So my parents come from Barbados and Dominica. They haven't got as much economic power on their own as they would if there was a trading block of the whole of, uh, the, whole of the Caribbean. So that kind of um, gives you an idea of the context of Brexit and why we need to look at Brexit from a different point of view. And we as a people shouldn't fear Brexit as saying, oh my God, it's a terrible thing, Brexit. You know, how are we going to travel to Europe and all that? that you're still going to be able to travel to Europe. You're still going to be able to go on holiday. There's not going to be a problem. There's no way on earth that the European countries are going to want to make it difficult for the British to travel to Europe because a lot of their, their tourism comes from Europe. Spain, for example, they're going to lose absolutely billions of pounds if they make it difficult for people to travel to Spain. So Africans who have these sort of what I call soft concerns is irrelevant. What about Germany? German cars. If, Germans, if the German government agree that they're going to ma put massive tariffs on cars made in Britain, what happens if Britain put tariffs on German cars and French cars? The French and the Germans are not going to want tariffs on, on Renaults, BMWs, Audis, Mercedes. Because if you put, if you put um, tariffs on them, it's going to be very, they're going to make those cars even more expensive and they're not going to be so popular here. So there's a bit of a tit-for-tat situation here. If you have tariffs on the British goods, they can bang tariffs on your goods. So there's a little bit of a, the European Union are in a bit of a difficult situation because anything that hurts Britain, they could hurt Europe. So it goes, it goes each way because they don't want to lose Britain's money. Britain spends a lot of money in Europe. You know, it's the biggest trading block. So they don't want to lose that. So we as Africans shouldn't have worries about Brexit. What we need to do is we need to look at what government is best for us. Is it a left of centre government? Is it a right government? Is it, what type of government is good for us? And we say, oh, well, they're all racist. Well, that's a bit simplistic to just say they're all racist. They have different interests. It's clear that the current Labour Party has shifted to the left. There's no doubt about it. And that party has shifted more to the working class base. There's, there's, there's no question about it. You know, I don't endorse the Labour Party, but it clearly has shifted as a movement. What we need to decide is whose interest, where would we position ourselves? Yeah, now, if you're a well-to-do, middle-class African living in Britain, you might say, well, I'm, I'm a Remainer because I want to keep my privileges, I want to keep my way of life, and everything's fine. I'm, I go to the Caribbean on holiday, I've got a nice car, I've got a nice house, everything's good. But if you're like the majority of our people, which is more like the white working class where we've got council properties or we're renting, we're not necessarily doing so well, we've got slightly more insecure employment, we're paid a little bit less, our life is not quite so rosy, Brexit is an opportunity because there's an opportunity out of Brexit that there could be a better Britain.